All right, next up is Jaguar Mining. And I would just like to remind people that we do have a virtual audience watching us today. This is a private portal that we've opened up for accredited investors. And we have people from all over the world, including Singapore, Europe, USA, India, South America, Canada, and the Cree Nation. They're actually watching these presentations in live time. And now we'll be wel welcoming Jaguar Mining, a Canadian-listed junior gold producer, development and exploration company, operating in Brazil with three gold mining complexes and a large land package with significant upside exploration potential in the prolific iron quadrangle of Minas Gerais. Before we introduce John Hill to the stage, who's going to take you through the story, I'd like to present a video. Gentlemen, roll the tape. was a great video. Before we introduce John, or I'm sorry, John is here. Um, I'm sorry. John, uh, John is the VP of Exploration for Jaguar Mining, and he will take you through the company's operations in Brazil. John, the stage is yours. Good morning, everybody. Um, thanks for coming to the presentation this morning. Before I start, I'd like to really shout out for Joanne and her fantastic team here that's put this event on. Um, it's a remarkable location for someone from Australia who's working in Brazil, living in Brazil. And uh, the organization has been exceptional. I think we all agree that this event is, is, is really gonna grow from here. And uh, 
Joanne has done a fantastic job, and I'd like to just congratulate her for that. Tom Nelson. While I work this out. Okay, just some forward-looking statements. Okay, um, as, as, the, as the video presented, JAG was a Toronto-listed but Brazil-focused junior operator and producer. And certainly what I want to get across today is, is the fact that in the short term we, we would like to demonstrate with good, with good reason uh, our, our focus on organic growth from installed capacity and a dominant land position in the iron quadrilateral of, of Brazil and, 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 and also a robust resource and reserve base which gives us five, five years of reserves. These are two operating underground mines close to the, the city of Belo Horizonte in Brazil. And we're cash producing assets, we're generating free cash flow, and as I'll demonstrate, I don't think there's a junior operator anywhere in the world that is so, has such conviction that they're going to spend 50% of their free cash flow on organic growth, exploration and development of, of a pipeline of really high quality, um, high worth projects. So I'll just take you through a few of those. Obviously, all of this cannot be done. We, we work in very close to urban areas where, and communities where we draw our workforce, a large percentage of our workforce. Our purpose is to build prosperity for all, and we take our ESG and development goals very seriously, and we have dedicated teams that work very closely with the community. Um, without that, we would not have got through the, the, the COVID um, episodes that we had over the last couple of years, and, and as a result, we've come out of that in very good, good shape. Okay, so just quickly, I'll take you through the, the operating assets. We have two underground mines. Um, one's called Tormelina, and the other is called Pilar. Tormelina produces about 40,000 ounces per year, and, and Pilar about 50,000 ounces. These are greenstone, structurally controlled um, types of ore bodies which have a, a, a small footprint at surface but have very strong structurally controlled plunge persistence going to great depths. There's, there's a lot of examples in the region where these, these types of ore bodies go down several kilometers. The most famous one being the, the Moravello mine which closed down in, in early 2000 after 150 years of continuous development and mining. So, these, so this, this is a specific type of ore body, so that, that drives a lot of our exploration um, strategy and exploration focus and designs. Um, what's, what's also very unique about Jaguar is our, is our installed capacity, which is underutilized. We, we're only use, using about 50% of our, our milling capacity at our two operating mines. And we have an, a third mill called Paciencia, which is, has been on care and maintenance since 2012. So if we, once again, when I talk a little bit more about exploration, we can, we can sort of certainly demonstrate that no matter what we find, we have a, a place to, to treat that material. And so we don't need to incur new capital expenditure. So that really gives us an advantage, even though our end game is to find big deposits with long life. Um, along the way, we're bound to find things that, that can increment our, our current production profiles. So, so really the, the other thing about the iron quadrangle, quadrangle is, is it's the third largest Archean greenstone terrain um, in terms of endowment globally. Um, examples would be the, what we've seen um, in the presentations yesterday is the Abitibi deposits, the phenolon, those types of things, very similar to that. Um, in Western Australia, the Yilgarn, that's, that's another example. So in terms of endowment, those two are bigger um, and potential, but uh, the iron quad is, is the third largest. And what's important about that, and sep what separates us, is that there's only two operators in that, in that, in those, in that greenstone belt, Anglo Gold and ourselves, Jaguar Mining. And you compare that to equivalent areas in Canada where there'd be several hundred operators and, and uh, explorers. Um, so the, the region hasn't seen systematic um, modern exploration, but it, it does have um, 
of this, of this potential. On all of our properties, there's some indication of previous work, either previous operating mines, currently operating mines, or um, occurrences that have been looked at going back 300 years. But so there's, there's, it's a very prospective area in terms of, of um, targets, and, and, and I'll take you through a few of those shortly. Essentially, this, this is really a, 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 an image of, our, of the, quadru the iron quadru quadrangle and the Archean belts. Um, the, red, the red squares are really where we have active drilling programs, um, advanced early stage going through to advanced projects. Um, the other thing to highlight is the, is the blue area to the south where we have a joint venture with IAM Gold. Um, that's more early stage, so we're doing generative exploration there. But getting back to my earlier point, 50% of our free cash flow is, at Jaguar is being dedicated to generative early stage exploration, um, maintaining our strong resource reserve inventories at our mines with four to five years of, of reserves, uh, over 10 years of resources, and then, a, then bringing a whole host of legacy projects um, that have sort of non-compliant historical resources that have been reported but are not currently sitting on our inventory. So the work that's required on those types of things is, is desktop studies, um, re, reviewing and, and, and validation of databases and, and, bringing, and bringing those to account without a lot of extra drilling or sampling required, just, just, just really using modern, you know, using um, economic assumptions and technical assumptions um, that are more relevant to, to now rather than when they were previously reported over the last 10 to 20 years. So this, this pie chart really just shows that we have a whole spread of projects across our, our 60,000 hectares of, of ground in the, in the quad and, and uh, that's, that's de dedicated to, in the short term, filling our excess mill capacity and in the, in the longer term, um, growing the company um, through, through discovery. Um, we've had some early exploration success um, over the last year, 18 months. We've discovered two, two new discoveries, initially oxides. Our, our end game is to look at these deeper um, plunge persistent structurally controlled projects, but um, the two projects I'm referring to are Craig Brown Down, which is five kilometers from our mill at Kete, and the Zona Bazal at which is several kilometers from our, our mill at Tomolina. Um, and, and remember, we have a lot of excess capacity at both of those plants that, that could take feed when these things are permitted. Um, the, other, the other project I want to touch on briefly is called FINA. That's our, that's our most advanced development project. The reason is that it's got a 400,000 ounce resource on it, it's seven grams per tonne, it's 500 meters just a long strike from where we're currently working. Um, we're sending development there. Um, the, the, the feature that we need to, the challenge with that project is it's refractory, so we need to look at a, a processing flow sheet. Um, and flotation is giving us good results in our, our test work. And as we move that project through to pre-feasibility and, and a PEA this year, um, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be presenting more, more news flow from that area. Okay, I just mentioned um, within our mines on an annualized basis, we like to replace depletion. Um, we've, we, we have that four to five years of reserve, so it's just a one year type exercise. So our budgets are really based on generating new inferred resources by projecting our, our, um, our known ore bodies um, along the strike and, and, and along long plunge. And that, that's just what I'm showing here from our, our Tormelina operation. Similarly, at Pilar, um, on, on an annualized basis, once again, we, we just do enough drilling to generate resources. And we, we, we really use a 60% conversion rate from um, inferred to, to indicated, and, 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 and these areas are actually just generating new inferred. So we really work on that, that type of, of basis. Um, just to take you quickly through a couple of our projects, this is Correga Brown Down. This was a Greenfields discovery um, based on on a regional target generation from remote sensing and uh, geophysical, geophysics. We did some geochemistry. We found uh, the red areas there, um, a very large golden soil anomaly above 50 ppb, over, over 500 meters extending well beyond that. And uh, we started to drill it. We had some early success with, with a, initially with auger drilling, and then we had a 40 meters at four gram 
um, kicker right at the start of the program. Um, and we've stepped out from there, really. So it's, it's still open-ended in terms of oxides. But once again, we're, we're coming back and starting in the next few weeks to, to tackle this project as, a, as, a, as a, a sort of a very high priority target that we can extend to depth. Um, on surface, these high-grade shoots can be, you know, several hundred meters long, a long strike, but, you know, we're targeting the, uh, down the plunge to, 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 to greater depths to, to see if we can, we can bag something that's uh, got a, a longer-term significance. Um, this is just another, another image on, on what, that, that, what those drilling programs are going to look like. Um, initially, a really sort of a, uh, a, a, a deep hole that just traverses two limbs of, a, of the regional structure um, and the projected position of the, of the, of the hinge of that fold um, as, a, as, a, as an initial hole, and then we'll work from, we'll work from there. Um, moving across to Tourmalina, this is the zone of Basel discovery. This, once again, a, a golden soil anomaly. Um, in red there, and an even more extensive silver and soil anomaly. Um, last year we did 8,000 metres on a 50 metre type grid. We got some very interesting intercepts um, from surface, and we also have some potential to, for these things to extend into the bedrock and, and to depth. So we're, we're working on, on uh, a, a modest resource in these areas and a, and a, and a, a trial mining scenario uh, and permitting scenario as soon as we can get that going. Um, but that's, this is just one example of, of, of what is, we hope will be many um, as we move forward. Um, still at Tormelina, uh, I, I want to highlight on this map the sort of the main geological trend that we have there. The red, the red areas are golden soil anomalies. In the, in the bottom where the Tormelina mine is, is, you can see the infrastructure from the mine. That's where we're currently working. And then we've got that 500 meter gap up to the finer project. Um, some very good um, drilling in, in metallurgical holes there in terms of results. We've just finished 15,000 metres of drilling on that project and we'll be moving that from an inferred resource of 400,000 ounces at seven grams um, to indicated towards the end of the year or early, early next year. Um, we, the samples from that drilling will be used for metallurgical test work and obviously we're looking at a, a flotation gravity type upfront um, process. We have plenty of mill capacity and then the product we produce would be a concentrate for, for onward sale um, or to potentially to some of the existing pressure oxidation facilities um, in the region or, or to export. Um, yeah, I, I guess from an exploration point of view, our aim is really to grow that project because we have open-ended um, intercepts. Um, just let me show you the, um, the long section, the, the Tourmalina mine on the left, on, my, on, on the left and, and the finer project on the right. We're sending a tunnel across more or less where that black arrow is um, to intercept the ore body at about 250, 300 metres below surface. That's going to take us probably another 18 months to get across there. But along the way, we have that gap area and uh, there is a lot of potential to find something along the way. And we're actively, with the, two, with the twin development ends, we can, we're drilling across the, the favourable structures to try and delineate more opportunities there. Um, and then finally, this is a very exciting initiative that we started uh, about a year ago now. We, we have, a, I mentioned earlier, we have one plant on care and maintenance with a 2,000 tonne per day ca capacity. Um, Iron Gold had a very large um, contiguous land position, which we entered into joint venture. We're operating. Um, it's really a, a fairly straightforward um, greenfields exploration um, joint venture, $6 million over four years to get 60% um, interest in that. What, we, what, what has pleasantly surprised us in this area is that the existing government maps that were published only in 2020 um, were wrong and they had misidentified uh, as, 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 as sediments the formation which, in, which is attributed to much of the gold um, endowment in the rest of the quad, it's called the Orofino, presentation and I'm just about to finish and um, and so we've we've changed the map and on the back of that our geochemistry and our drone survey and everything has generated a, a, a pipeline of projects which we're now starting to drill uh, very very um, interesting and very exciting exploration project on the go there so so really that's that's um, the end of my presentation and uh, please if there's any questions um, get hold of me 
or um, I'm, I'm at the conference for the rest of the rest of the day. Thank you very much.